Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the Free iTunes Podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, and in this one I'm answering a viewer's question. Actually, I answered this question in more detail in a comment, but I thought it'd be interesting for a video. And his question basically was, how, he was talking about a micro four thirds camera, how large could he make a print using that camera? And so his name was uh, My Channel. And, but I thought it really, the, uh, the more important question is, do we need to be terribly concerned about the megapixels of our camera? Now there are channels out there that will say, absolutely, you've got to have a super megapixel camera and they do the math and they show the reasons why and they do 400% crops and blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to give you a different slant on this and you can take whatever slant you like. So first I'm going to give you the standard stock answer. Then I'm going to give you the answer in 10 seconds, then I'm going to give you the detailed answer. So the stock answer is you want to have a image at around 300 dpi because 300 dpi is the maximum resolution that our vision can see. So if you make an image at 400 dpi, it's not going to look any sharper, for instance, than an image at 300 dpi. So that's the stock answer. And what you can do is you can go and get little charts and pretty pictures like this uh, off the web all over the place. And it lets you know, for instance, that if you have and you want to make an 8 by, you know, let's say an 8 by 10, you need an 8 megapixel camera. If you want to, if you have a 12 megapixel camera, you can make an image um, that's about 14 by 9. But if you want to make a large image, this one goes up to 27 by 8. 18, you have to have a 44 megapixel camera. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Here's the uh, other answer. The other answer is don't worry about it. It's going to be fine no matter how many megapixels you have, as long as it's a fairly modern camera. And now here's the detail. So again, this is based on perception. So people looking as carefully as they could, close up, just trying to examine differences in image quality. But people don't look at pictures like that at all, right? In fact, look at this first, this first photograph. This is hanging above my couch in my family room. I did not take this photo. I think my wife bought it at Ikea. And it is a whopping 46 by 30, oh, what do I have here? By 30 inches. So it's a huge print. I will tell you the print is not very sharp. It doesn't have very good dynamic range. Uh, it doesn't, the, the exposure even seems a little dull. We love the picture, right? Because it adds a dimension to the room. It's not meant to be the focus of the room. It just adds something on that wall instead of just having a big blank wall. And it looks great. And people have commented that they like it. So this is, this. I don't know if this was a digital print. I think it's actually a film print. Don't forget that 35 millimeter film has lower resolution than most digital cameras nowadays. So depending on the film, whether it's like a black and white film or color film or the different versions of it, most 35 millimeter film had a resolution between four and 16 megapixels. And certainly, you know, from the day of 35 millimeter film, people were blowing that stuff up all the time, making giant prints of, of the happy wedding day or whatever, and it looked just great. So how is that possible? It means that that 300 DPI rule doesn't apply in exact detail. And there are many other factors that impact the quality of an image. The first thing to realize is that in many cases, we don't want something that is super tack sharp. It doesn't look good. Even in landscapes like that one that I just showed you, it doesn't all, we don't always want things to be super sharp. Maybe if we're doing forensics, maybe if we're doing something else, yes, we want as much detail as possible, but we don't have to. It's really about the image, and that's the thing to remember. It's also about the exposure. So a properly exposed low megapixel or lower megapixel image is going to look a heck of a lot better than a poorly exposed high megapixel image. In fact, a lot of high megapixel images, if they're even if the technique is off just a tiny bit, if you jiggle that camera just a little bit, you're going to get a blurrier image just because there's so much data that you're that you're looking at. So, proper exposure is important. Well, what about using other DPI? Well, honestly, most people aren't going to see a difference at 200 dpi, and a lot of people, unless they're examining things closely, won't see a difference at 150 or even 100 dpi. So now we're talking about making a picture three times bigger because, because in reality, most people aren't going to see the difference. 
What other factors impact the sharpness of an image, if that's what we're going for? Well, of course, the lens. Now, even a kit lens will take an adequately sharp picture in many cases, but of course, if you're going to spend several thousand dollars on a lens that has super optics, well, that's going to produce a sharper image because a blurry image, even on a super, super high pixelated sensor, is still going to be blurry. What other factors impact things? Well, the processor and the size of the pixels. So people will say that if you have a um, larger photo site, like on a full sensor camera, that you'll probably get a, a better looking, sharper looking image, better looking maybe to be better, than if you have uh, a small uh, photo site on a little tiny chip, or maybe a super high density uh, chip. So that's the case, and I, I know a lot of people will say that they can blow up images from, let's say, a D700, which is a full-size 12 megapixel sensor, pretty pretty large. And um, But they'll say that they can take an image from a D3, which uses the same sensor, and it looks even better. Well, probably because the processing is a little bit different on that D3. So the processor, the size of the photo sites make a difference. So what do you do if you have a fairly low resolution image and you need to blow it up for some reason? Well, first of all, examine why you need to blow it up. So you can have a gigantic billboard that has very low megapixels because you're looking at it from a distance and our eyes will interpolate things. Um, in fact, the further you go, I mean, if you're right up on a picture versus being three feet away versus five feet away versus 10 feet away, it makes a huge difference in how sharp that image looks. So so again, look at how far you are away. But let's say you, you just really felt like the image looked maybe pixelated, which would not look good or did not did not look appropriate. Well, it's easy enough to modify that image in a photo editor like Photoshop or Affinity Photo or all these other other programs that are out there. You can expand the size of the image um, and and reinterpolate things by a variety of methods. And most people would say use by cubic. Um, there's other methods too that, that offer different levels of, of what you're looking for. Um, and so you let's and, and then of course is not going to add extra data. You can't create data where none exists, but it's going to interpolate between pixels and make things smoother and give you an image that's going to be more acceptable. But let's say that image is not quite as sharp as sharp as you would like. Well, then you can add sharpness. You can use a non-sharp mask. You can add a little bit of digital noise, which gives us the perception of sharpness. Uh, there's many things that you can do to trick your eye into thinking that image is sharper than it is. So the bottom line with all of this is that if you have a modern camera with 10 megapixels, 12 megapixels, 18 megapixels, 24 megapixels, 36 megapixels, 44, whatever, um, it's going to do the job just fine unless you have an exceptional need. What would be an exceptional need? I always think of forensics. So if you're going to take a picture of a large crowd and you have to focus on that one face or that one license plate, well, there's no real substitute for megapixels then. But for things that we're looking at, it, it really doesn't, there's, there's, there's many ways to take a low megapixel image and make it look much better. So I'm going to end with this one photo here. So this is a bathroom that I remodeled a few years ago, and I needed some artwork to uh, hang above the toilet. Uh, and I couldn't really find what I was looking for at the, the various places that I looked online or going to stores and things. And so I thought, oh, let me just look at my photo gallery. And I found an image taken with a Pentax Q. Now that was a little cute little camera that had a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. In other words, the same size sensor that you would find in the typical compact camera. It was 12, 12 megapixels, so not a lot of megapixels, tiny sensor. I took an image, this image, and I cropped it even further to probably around 8 megapixels. And I did some photo manipulation just because I wanted to, I was going for an artistic look as opposed to a, a, a photograph look. And I printed this up at 24 by 24. Again, 8 megapixels, small sensor, a uh, little modification. It was meant to be that way. And people are viewing this. I mean, let's face it, you're standing facing the toilet. This is a few, this far, this, this far away, right? And people love it and it looks great. So again, don't just take things on theory. Understand that there is a practice 
to psych uh, to psychiatry. There's a practice to photography, and there's also a, um, uh, a, a, a an achievable goal. So you're you're and there's many factors that impact the quality of a print. It's not just DPI. It's all these other things that we just talked about. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Uh, if you like my channel, please subscribe. It's very diverse. If you like me, I have a writing blog, drmikekuna.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com. I also have a podcast that I do with my wife called Psychiatric Secrets on iTunes and other podcatching sites. And thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.